Hello everyone, it's good to see you back. Uh, the new rhyme code Ryman Exotic has been making waves with his popularity and strength it brings in game. And honestly, it's about damn time we got a new status to a focus Exotic to use. And for that, I will be showing off the brand new Exotic today with Wicked Implement added on for a crazy, non-stop, a freezing kit that is much better than Oshimansi gloves. No, seriously, it really is much more better. Now, if you think the base turrets are already busted with how many builds have been created just around them, just you wait and see what this build here can do. So, starting with the general aim and exotic of the build, like we always do, our aim is to showcase the brand new exotic armor piece and also provide a worthy build for players that can use an end game. For this, we will be using Rhyme Code Rhymant and Wicked Implement. We start with our exotic armor, Rhyme Code Rhymant, with its exotic effect, Bleak Domain, it states, your Bleak Watcher's turrets are enhanced with extended range and are surrounded by stasis crystals and a storm. While standing in the storm, you are granted icicles over time. Icicles activate when you fire your weapon, applying slow to targets they hit. The exotic will enhance stasis turrets through two ways, increased range and additional slow. And these two buffs for users is where the exotic can shine the most when used pretty much everywhere. Extended range is great for dealing with enemies at far distances. While the additional slow effect when standing within his range is where his main strengths lie. It encourages players to stick near the turret upon activation at all times and doing so will reward you the ability to apply extra slow effect while firing your weapon. This is where choosing the right status weapon comes into play as using a weapon that has chill clip or headstone will play a big part in how effective it can shut down rooms of enemies. This is also where using wicked implement actually comes in handy as they can slow freeze, shatter and create stasis glaciers all in one while also playing within the range of the weapon and the exotic. Our second exotic is the Wicked Implement with its exotic effect Creep Intrition which states, rapidly landing position hits causes targets to become slowed. What makes this weapon worth the investment for the kit is the synergy with the slow, freeze and glacier effect upon it being provided. These all play within our exotic armor effect which encourages players to stay within its radius for further buffs. On top of that, combining his effect with the seasonal mod and applying faster command and rune to the kit overall improves the weapon's performance and increases the user's survivability without the need of adding additional safety mods via our stats. In fact, I can also see Virgo's curve bow being handy for his glacier creation as well depending on how you want to go about using the glaciers created. For aspects and fragments, we then have the following. A feed the void where defeating a target with an ability will grant you devour. A bleak watcher, where converting your grenades will turn them into stasis turrets that will slow and freeze targets. A fast of devotion, where defeating targets inflicted with stasis or strand debuffs grants bonus light transcendence energy. A fast of protection, where being surrounded by enemies will grant you damage reduction. A fast of command, where freezing or suppressing a target reloads your equipped weapon. A fast of balance, where rapidly defeating targets with light abilities grants melee energy. Rapidly defeating targets with dark abilities grants grenade energy, and Fast of Ruin, which will increase the size and damage of the burst when you shatter a status crystal or frozen target. It will also increase the AoE effect of your solar ignitions. Having the following fragments are best for the build out for it to perform extraordinarily well in end game and general activities. Having Fast of Devotion, Command, and Ruin is a must with how they interact with stasis and our solar super in our kit. A faster command is interesting, as using this with Wicked Implement and a Stasis Turret can allow the kit to auto reload back to back without your input needed. Now of course command does have a cooldown to it, but considering that you can apply slow and freeze constantly on a single ultra enemy, it does pay off massively with the DPS. I did at one point want to try and also apply faster solitude to the set, considering that we are using a scout rifle and do have the concussive reload mod on the hand. However, I felt it may not be needed so much with how much frost armor we already have available on hand. You may want to try this out on your end as having that extra debuff to enemies is helpful for team activities, but at the same time, you may find better use with command in hand instead, like shown. For the mods and stats, we have both resilience and discipline marked with the highest priorities for the kit. The strength is also being supported with thanks to our exotic weapon but it's not wholly needed to be focused on if you don't wish to. Resilience, we have ours at tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction. With Frost Armor at play, 
you will be tanky enough to deal with the vast majority of enemies you face. With this in mind, you can use Concussive Dampener as well for the AoE reduction, but using the Elemental Resistance mod for that 15% damage reduction is probably better for the long term duration of the build. A discipline we then have ours at tier 10 for a 1 minute 1 second cooldown via Storm Grenades. While Cold Snap Grenades might be better suited for the kit overall theme, Arc Grenades can help with distinguishing damage depending on the situation you are in. Now, what I mean by this is that since we have Feed the Void on hand, the amount of grenade energy we get back can dictate how often we can rely on our stasis turrets. If everything plays out well, or terrible, we can easily switch between the two in a moment's notice and still gain our grenade energy back in seconds upon getting kills. This shouldn't be the case for most players, but it's wise to keep this in mind just in case you might get into a rough or difficult situation. Anyways, outside of that, this brings us on to the additional mods which are recommended for buffing our key stats. A Focus and Strike for a 12% class ability buff, Impact Induction times 2 for a 17% grenade buff, Outreach for a 12% mini regen buff, and Distribution for a 4% all ability buff will cover the key areas for the general build. A further additional mods we then have the following Heavy Ammo Finder, Scout, Reserves, and Scavenger mod for a heavy weapon of use. A stasis siphon for creating orbs of power via stasis weapon type. Charged up times 1 for increasing the maximum stack of armor charges by plus 1. Recuperation, where collecting orbs of power replenishes our health. A stasis weapon surge times 1 for a 10% stasis weapon buff. And lastly, powerful attraction, where using your class ability will collect orbs of power within our vicinity. As we have covered our exotic priming weapon, I would then advise you to pick some super weapons for the build. What I recommend are all optional, so please keep this in mind. Our secondary will be the Wildstar Grenade Launcher with Envious Assassin and One for All. With this season's heavily focus on grenade launchers, I found that the following is great to be used against majors and above enemies to face. With Envious in hand, I can gain up to about 3 rounds within one magazine, which is good against ultra enemies and quickly weakening them in a short amount of time. This is a really powerful weapon worth investing and can be gotten from Zavala. For a heavy, we have the Dimensional Hypertroid with Fill Prep and Vorpal Weapon. A very powerful weapon to use this season, the following is something everyone should at least have available on hand with how capable it is against bosses to many bosses. While some may prefer the standard grenade launchers for that extra DPS boost, this one can take out multiple enemies while also doing a significant amount of damage in one go. On top of that, it's also much more safer to operate with without the risk of blowing yourself up in the process. So its pros do heavily outweigh its cons. While I do believe Osteomancy Gloves is better in terms of providing more tours while on the go, Raincoat is better in terms of applying slow and freeze on a faster basis and be more better suited when paired with a stasis weapon that makes full use of its effects at range. This is something you can test out yourself, but I found that Rhyme Coat with Wicked Implement is generally the best combo every Warlock main will want to use for the build. The innate effect of freezing targets from Wicked Implement and also being able to create status shards from kills allows us to maximize our melee on a more grander scale. This means if you prefer to use the other melee options in game, then you're free to do so, as the cooldown rate they have can be negated from the shards created. And next, you then have the ability of Frost Armor playing a big part within the build, where utilizing Windchill and Armor Ramis within the current build will allow you to tank incoming shots by an extra 100%. This is quite effective when using it in GMs, as it means one shot attacks from most enemies have a chance for you to survive the more lethal hits over time. Lastly, our status to effect when linked into Hell the Storm and Brain Freeze mod can turn the battlefield into a deadly ice ring. Well, let's just say it's enough to where you can single handedly deal with a room of enemies in higher end game content without your allies needing to be nearby. All of this and more bring out the true power of the exotic, which for me, feels like an upgrade to stasis turrets that we know of. While having two stasis turrets via Osimancy Gloves is good, having one buffed up turret is better as long as you're building on top of its effects further. Whether you're using a legendary or exotic weapon, the following is exceptional in its design and capable of overthrowing a lot of content with practical ease. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared, then please leave a comment below. While if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos, then leave a like and sub while you're here. A dim link for the build is located below in the pinned section, and I do advise you to check out my playlist for more. 
it was great sharing today's video with you all and i hope to see you again soon